What's up, guys? NJ Bike Life here on this beautiful road. And I like this little thing on the gas cap. You can like spin it around. It's probably not good. It's probably gonna break off one day and I'm gonna be shit out of luck. But anyway, while I'm not paying attention to the road, um, yeah, let's talk about why I went with this sweet ass. 1983 Honda V1100 Magna V65. Well, to be honest, the main reason, I wanted to be able to ride on the road and be able to hear myself. I wanted to be able to go 50 miles an hour and be comfortable on a bike. If the dirt bike that I had, like if the WR is um, like set up for the road, I would totally, you know, would have just kept that but I like it too much in the dirt to convert it back to being, you know, a bike that's capable of 85 miles an hour. So, my main reason from wanting a bigger bike was to be able to have a bike that would ride on the highways. You know, and that's like, I started looking out, my dad's got a Honda um, CX500. So I started looking at those bikes first I went to go look at a, another Honda 500. It was relatively cheap, but um, it wasn't as good of condition and I wasn't able to talk the guy down on price as low as I had wanted it. So I, um, I passed on that one. And then my dad told me, he was like, dude, you can't get a 500. You gotta get, you know, a 750 or a, a 1000, 1100. Otherwise you're gonna get no respect on the road. And I'm like, what do I need to respect for? You know, I just wanna ride up and down the streets, be able to go on the highway, the parkway, the interstates. And then I like thought about it. I mean, I started looking and I found this one, but this one was in like a sketchy neighborhood. So I didn't know how good it was. So uh, I called the guy and he sounded like a real trustworthy guy. He sounded like he knew what he was talking about as far as the bike goes. And I mean, 6,000 miles. You cannot be 6,000 miles. Like, no matter what. Even if the bike has got billions of issues, it's still got 6,000 miles. You could put in another 500 to a grand fixing it. And then for whatever you paid for, plus the 500 to the grand, you can go and you know sell it back five years down the road after you use it to get 10,000 miles on it or 20,000 miles, and you'll still get your money back. So, you know, I, I, was, I didn't really want to get a 1100cc bike, but at the same time, this bike was the right price at the right time and I was able to talk the guy down even less than what he had it listed for and I was comfortable pretty much at what he had it listed for so that's why I picked this up and it actually like really worked out the kid was amazed that I had a camera on the side of my head so being that it worked out I mean I'm actually glad that I did get this bike because, I mean, I didn't really know much about it <laughs> prior to, to looking at it. And then after I buy it, I hear like so much good stuff about it. So I'm actually really excited that I did pick this up. But the dirt bike, it just, just wasn't practical on the road. You know, the dirt bike was, was good for like 50 mile an hour roads. It was good for like 45 mile an hour roads, but it just wasn't practical for, you know, anything more than that. Like even at 50, like if I'm doing like 55, that dirt bike is, is screaming way too much, you know? And all I had to do was, was drop the sprocket, you know, go back to a 13 front sprocket. And, uh, is it 13 in the front or is it or is it 14 in the front? Yeah, I'm not too sure. 
I think it's 14 in the front because I think I did drop it to 13. You know, so I could have just went to 14 in the front. And had like 48 in the back. No, I think it's like 45 in the back. And I would have been solid. But then I'd lose all my torque in, uh, in the woods. <laughs> and what's the point of having a dirt bike if you can't ride it in the woods? So I wanted to keep it a dirt bike. You know, I didn't want to put it back to the street bike. Because that D200 SE, the first bike that I had, the Suzuki, that bike was like perfect for the, the street. You know, that bike would do 70 easy. But it didn't ride for shit in the woods. But this bike is just way more practical. You know, if I want to go down to the beach, or if I want to go, you know, realistic anywhere, anywhere that's more than 55 miles an hour, like, the dirt bike just wasn't cutting it. And I don't know what kind of damage that's doing to the engine, having it ride long periods of time with high RPMs. But the dirt bike is, is, is now going to be, like, my dirt bike. You know, it's going to be, like, an actual bike on the dirt. I'll probably ride it, you know, if I don't feel like letting this, like, big guy warm up. Then I'll grab that one, go to the store and stuff. We're going on 195 and we don't care. Did I just annoy anyone by going really slow around the corner? Around this turn? So, third gear, we're doing 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That was pretty. Fourth year. Fifth year. Only drive. We're doing 72 in overdrive. And the bike is nice and cold. I can hear myself talk, which is ridiculous. I'm not even moving by the wind. Like, can you really get any better than this? Like, this is the reason why you need a cruiser bike over an enduro if you like travel. If you want an enduro that you can ride in the woods and be street legal, then get an enduro by all means. But if you're using an enduro like how I'm using an enduro and for traveling, like, I'm traveling 100 miles, you know, a day, 50 miles a day on an enduro. It's not practical at all. This, this is practical. Like, like, I can't go any fast. I'm doing, literally, I'm doing 70. And people are passing. Speed limit 65. Like, what more can I do? But I'll literally just cruise all day like this. Like, this is why I bought this big bike. Looked at her mirror, got up out of her seat, looked back at me, and then turned. What the fuck in my eye? Look, now she doesn't even know where she's going. What an idiot.